Welcome to the Public Sector Partners Technology and Government Series. This year's topic is Big Data, Managing Government Information. I'm Russ Hicks and I'll be your host for today's proceedings. Each year, Public Sector Partners produces several forums in partnership with California government. The focus of these forums is to examine the ways that government functions and try to improve that process. In that regard, PSP acts as a catalyst for change, bringing together problems and solutions in an educational setting designed to encourage dialogue, debate, and discussion. In order to accomplish this, we recruit leaders and tip of the spear thinkers from both the public and private sector to form an advisory board that identifies the content and direction of these forums. On the screen, you see the people that participated in the production of this event. The advisory board for this forum included more than 50 members and they worked on the content for this event for more than six months to prepare the educational sessions that you will attend today. So please join me in giving them a warm round of applause for all their hard work. I would also be remiss if I didn't thank our numerous sponsors that brought not only funding to make this event possible, but also, and more importantly, the subject matter expertise uh, that will help you navigate today's discussion and better understand how that knowledge can improve the way that you do your job. My heartfelt thanks goes out to our executive sponsor, Karen Johnson. She demonstrated tremendous passion as she led us in the creation of this event. She's been a great advocate for big data and she played a key role in ensuring that the information you receive today is applicable to the issues and challenges facing California government. I also want to uh, send out a special thank you to Director Carlos Ramos, the state CIO, and his Director of Workforce Development, Christy Borshin, for having the vision a year ago that identified the need to understand big data and the foresight to launch this educational effort. So what is big data? According to Wikipedia, it's a term for the collection of data sets so large and complex that it becomes difficult to process using on-hand database management tools or traditional data processing applications. The challenges with big data include capturing all of that information, managing large quantities of information, storing large quantities of information, searching through large quantities of information. Are you getting a theme here? Transferring, analyzing, visualizing big quantities of information. That's why we're doing a forum today. This is a complex topic. To understand the importance of big data, you need to understand that relationships exist within pools of information and that the value comes in identifying how seemingly disparate or unrelated information can come together to form a picture and give you new answers to old questions. Many of you have heard uh, acknowledgments going out to companies like uh, Google, Amazon, FedEx uh, for how they leverage big data. Uh, they've used it to, uh, to uh, grow their organizations, to improve their efficiency, and deliver better services. But what nobody tells you is that while that is true, the people that created those companies understood the promise of big data from the very beginning. And so they built their infrastructure with an understanding of how to leverage the big data and made it part of their genetic makeup, right? 
So in other words, they built their systems to support big data and the leveraging of the big data. Government hasn't had that option because government's been collecting information kind of ever since government existed, right? Um, and while, uh, for the most part, for most of its history, government has been capturing information very manually, about World War II, they started collecting it electronically, right? I, I don't know if anybody's ever heard the term ENIAC, but it was a computer actually designed in, in uh, World War II to support the war effort. These systems uh, that were created to begin to collect and process information uh, created new problems. Uh, as the information began to grow, we had to create new processes to handle that information. So you had uh, new ideas created like data warehousing, master data management, and of course, data analysis. This is, this is a humorous uh, look at terms that you're going to hear used throughout this conference because now the tools actually exist to be able to do that same functionality but do it like this instead of days or weeks or months. The original mission of the legacy systems was to provide continuity and make concerted effort to provide a fail-safe in case of emergency or disaster. They were not designed with the concept of information sharing with related systems that came along after them. The good news is that the tools do exist now with, uh, so that you can work with these legacy systems, which have always been the workhorse of government information gathering and storage. So the time is now for government to embrace the promise of big data and learn to leverage it to improve the way it does business. Google, Amazon, and others have prospered not by giving customers information, but by giving them shortcuts to decisions and actions. California government has always done a tremendous job of information gathering, but you need to realize that the value of that information is not in the holding of it, but in the sharing of it with people that can use it to make a difference. So where do you start? Well, helping you answer that question is the purpose of today's forum. We've assembled dozens of subject matter experts from both the public and private sector to help with that discussion. However, keep in mind this is a complex topic, and there's no way a one-day forum can answer all of your questions, and the reality is we don't have that expectation. Our goal is to get you to start asking the questions and provide you with resources and direction to help you discover the answers so that by the end of the day you have a better idea of the possibilities that you and your teams can achieve. So, without any further ado, I want to start us on that journey. Uh, to get us started, I'm pleased to bring to the stage Stuart Drown. Stuart Drown is the Deputy Secretary for Improvement and Accountability at the Government Operations Agency. Among the nine departments, boards, commissions, and, news uh, and the new agency in the new agency are the Department of General Services and the Department of Technology. Prior to his appointment, Mr. Drown was executive director for the Little Hoover Commission for more than seven years, where he managed the citizen-led commission staff and study process. Before joining government, Mr. Drown was a city editor of the Sacramento Bee. His two-decade newspaper career included stints as business editor, labor writer, metro reporter at various daily newspapers. Mr. Drown has a master's degree in public policy and a bachelor's degree in, the ec in economics from UC Berkeley. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Stuart Drown. Good morning. Thank you. Um, as Russ said, I'm the Deputy Secretary for Improvement and Accountability. It's a brand new position in a brand new agency, the Government Operations Agency. 
Our agency secretary, Mary Bell Batcher, uh, was unable to attend today, um, but she wanted to um, welcome you this morning and uh, on her behalf and to personally thank you for attending the Big Data event today. She is at the governor's State of the State address, which will start or has started already. She also wanted me to convey, convey her commitment to achieving a more open and transparent state government through greater use of data. For those who don't know about us yet, GovOps was created last July uh, through Governor Brown's reorganization plan of 2012. One of the agency's key goals is modernizing state government processes for the benefit of people who use government services, but also for state employees to as well who use government services. And achieving that goal uh, will depend on collecting data and analyzing it and acting on what the analysis recommends and also making better use of the data we have. Um, these are topics we'll know a lot more about by the end of the day and it's exciting to see so many of our colleagues here today to take advantage of this opportunity. Secretary Batcher would like to thank our hosts for the invitation to speak. More important, she recognizes that it's the people here in this audience who will drive the changes we're looking to make in state and local government. GovOps is ready to listen to your good ideas and work with you to achieve better government performance and accountability through open data and by mining big data. It's now my pleasure to turn you over to the director of California's Department of Technology, Carlos Ramos. Director Ramos is the state's chief information officer and has been an important leader in improving how California uses technology. Good morning, Carlos. Good morning. This is Carlos Ramos, CIO of the state of California. Welcome to the 2014 Big Data Forum. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you this morning, but I will be with you this afternoon. I did want to take a chance to welcome you to the forum and then also to uh, thank Karen Johnson, the executive sponsor, and Russ Hicks and the group from PSP for putting it on. I'm really excited about this forum because I'm excited about government finally taking a chance and an opportunity to learn about big data and how it can apply in government. I was at a conference recently where I got a chance to hear from uh, the chief marketing officer of a very large and very uh, well-known housewares uh, company. They have stores all over the country and uh, he was sharing how they've applied big data and data analytics to help increase revenue to their bottom line. Essentially what they do is that they track how uh, they track the buying behavior of their customers. They try to develop a profile of their customer base and their buying habits. And by that they're able to build a long-term relationship with their with their clients. They're able to tell, for example, if uh, one of their long-term customers is coming to an age where they're having children, or maybe the, there's a big event in their life like marriage in, in the works, or buying a house. And based on their stage of life, they're able to change their marketing to those, to those individuals. They're able to present them information about products and services that are particular to whatever their stage of life is. So if you're buying a house, they may show you furniture. If you're having kids, they may show you kids stuff. If you're planning a wedding or you know any other big move, the information that they share with you is customized to where you are in your stage of life. One of the things that I found very interesting is they also analyze your social media, uh, the social media habits of their customers. So for example, if their client is coming to their web page from Pinterest, the, the way that they present information on their products to those individuals is formatted to look very much like a Pinterest page or Pinterest bulletin board. What they found is that by applying these analytics, by looking at, at the behavior of their, of their customers and by looking at information that they already have on their customer base, they're greatly able to drive sales to their, to their bottom line and sales of their merchandise. It got me thinking about what could government do if government were to apply analytics to looking at its constituents and its consumer base. Maybe we could provide information to folks as they hit certain stages of their life where we in interact with them. Maybe if a family has kids that are becoming of driving age, or if, you know, if kids are getting ready to go off to college, or folks are, fa are facing retirement decisions or healthcare decisions. Maybe we can provide information and services in a customized way that's very effective in reaching reaching out our, to our constituents and providing good outcomes. 
Anyway, I think we'll learn about our opportunities to do that in the public sector during today's forum. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get a lot out of it and bring some good ideas back home with you and put them to work in your office. Thank you, and I'll see you a little later.